All right, now we're going to talk about child support in depth. Specifically, I'm going to give you five reasons why I recommend you do not have an official child support order as part of your overall divorce. Now, remember, I'm talking about amicable divorce cases, not where you guys are trying to kill each other, going to court and trial. You're going to say, Tim, that's crazy. Why would I not want to have an official court order for child support? It's because because these people are amicable. They were talking about their, they want to co-parent. They want to be friends. They want to uh, be good parents to their children and be able to get along. As this person said earlier on the consultation, we're going to be in each other's lives for a long time, dealing with our kids and, you know, graduations and proms and high school and college and all that in their life. Because I believe the youngest was two years old. So, and she was absolutely right. So you took the words, out of my mouth. So here's why I recommend you don't have an official child support order as part of your divorce case. Number one, flexibility. Without a former, without a formal court, I'm going to start over. Flexibility. Without a formal child support order, parents have more flexibility to adjust payments based on changing circumstances such as fluctuations in income or the child's needs. The flexibility can lead to more cooperative co-parenting relationships. So I've talked to a bunch of clients today, uh, and that's my new process in asking them uh, is to let them know, hey, we don't have to have an official child support order as part of your divorce. We can write in on the child. We have to have a child support order attachment, but when I mean an official order for it, meaning not an actual dollar amount. So um, I'm recommending that to our clients where applicable. Um, I know some people still want it, and that's fine. It's your call, not mine. But you do not have to have it. So I want to talk about why you shouldn't and some of the benefits. So talking about the uh, changing circumstances, um, maybe a time, there's a timeshare change. And and I'm not saying, keep in mind, I'm not saying that you don't, you don't, you guys are not assisting each other with child support. Uh, a lot of people jump on me when I do these talks about no child support. I'm not saying you guys are not help, taking care of the kid, I'm not saying you guys aren't behind the scenes. Um, helping each other out or paying for um, extracurricular activities or co-pays or, you know, that sort of thing. I'm just saying in a, no official per the court order child support. That's all I'm talking about. So if you have an official child support order and say it's, you know, a thousand bucks a month, there is no flexibility in that. That is now court ordered that it's a thousand dollars a month. And the only way to change that is by going back to court. That doesn't seem very flexible to me that you have to go to court if you want to change something just because one of you moved. And now the timeshare is different. And like I was talking about earlier, if your incomes change and, um, you know, there should be an increase or decrease in child support for that reason, you have to go back to court to change that. If you leave it reserved and you handle everything behind the scenes, I think you're going to be a lot better off. Now, I know there are some of those that they're going to want to involve, you know, child support incorporate into it. And that's totally fine. It's not wrong. Um, You just don't have as much flexibility. Number two reason why I recommend you don't have a official child support order uh, in your divorce is cost savings. Touched on this a bit, but avoiding the legal process associated with establishing a child support order can save both parties time and money and legal fees and court costs. This can be particularly beneficial if the divorcing couple agree on child support arrangements and can handle it amicably. So that kind of, like I said, we were touched on that a bit. We're talking about the fact that you have to go to court every time you want to modify or change the child support order. So in our example where he said in the divorce, it was a thousand dollars. If there's a change in circumstances, income change, what, you know, timeshare change or something that, you, that causes you wanting to change the child support order you have in place, you're going to have to go back to court. Now by agreement, it's as little, it's as little as us just drafting a, a four page stipulation saying we're modifying child support from a thousand to 500 or whatever you're doing. But, um, you still are going to have a fee, a cost for that. I charge a fee to do those modifications. You're going to have court fees. That's not necessary if you have a reserved jurisdiction on child support and out of court agreement on child support. And you simply say, Hey, Janet, you know, let's, uh, here's the situation. Let's discuss uh, changing the child support up or down or whatever you guys are doing. Number three reason I recommend you don't have a child support order in your official. Uh, judgment final divorce paperwork is privacy. I wrote court proceedings and documents related to child support orders are typically matters of public record. By not having an official order, parents can maintain a greater 
privacy regarding their financial arrangement and personal matters. I tell you, every uh, everything I do for you as my client is to keep your privacy intact. Uh, when it comes to the settlement agreement, we're not listing values. We're not listing account numbers on accounts, on pensions, and so forth, all to keep your information private. So this hit me big when I was coming up with these reasons not to do this, privacy. You have a child support order that is public record, technically. Someone could go obtain those records and say, oh, you're paying child support. And I don't know, use it against you or whatever nefarious purposes they would use that information for. Um, you know, if you have to give a copy of your divorce decree for whatever evidence, I don't know, future spouse, um, you're going to get married. But that legal document has terms of, of all your other terms. Excuse me, has uh, all your other terms, property division, spouse support, who's keeping what, custody. And you have the child support order. I don't think there's a negative connotation about people who are paying child support. I think I think there is among a certain public of people that say, oh, you're paying child support like, you don't, you know, because you don't have custody. It's not that situation. But if you had to give this like to your employer for some reason, I don't know why you'd have to do that. But if you had to give your um, child, your settlement agreement, your judgment to anyone else, and if it has that child support in there, then it's just a lack of privacy. If you didn't have it in there, when we did reserve jurisdiction, then they don't know that you're paying. As far as they know, they read through your paperwork. They don't know that you're paying child support at all. So you can keep it totally private. The fourth reason I came up with on why I recommend that you don't have an official child support order as part of your settlement agreement is avoiding conflict. And I wrote down, in some cases, the formalization of a child support order can lead to heightened conflict between ex-partners. By keeping child support arrangements informal, parents may be able to avoid unnecessary tension and maintain a more positive relationship for the sake of their children. And this came up on exactly, and I wrote, I, I had this plan to do this video today before I had this con I had a consultation with clients that had this exact scenario came up. They were concerned about, oh, do we have to have child support involved? You know, we don't want child support. You know, we want to handle it behind the scenes. They're so concerned about what they had to decide on. And I said, no, I said, in fact, I'm going to do this video today about this. And this, I think it was going to have a, be, create a conflict with them if we had, if I forced them or, or I didn't know that the court would allow a reserve jurisdiction, zero child support, uh, child support order that they, they would have been forced into, Hey, let's run the numbers. Oh, based on your income and her income and the timeshare. Hey, the calculation shows $500 in child support. So that's what it has to be. That's what would happen if you went to court, but not if you use an amicable divorce solution like myself to help you. We can package it up any way you like. So avoiding conflict was number four. Number five, reason why I recommend reserved child support or no child support as part of your overall judgment and settlement agreement is parental cooperation. Opting not to have an official child support order may encourage both parents to work together collaboratively to meet the financial needs of the children, this cooperation, a cooperative approach can lead to more effective co-parenting and better outcomes for the children involved. So all of these flexibility, cost savings, privacy, avoiding conflict, parental cooperation, that all sounds great to me. How about you? Does it sound good to not have child support? I think so. Um, you know, what are the downsides though? And I'm sure people are going to the naysayers. Well, what if we don't have a child support order and he or she doesn't pay me or as agreed, or we have a falling out? That's true. You have a point. But remember, we're going to mark reserve jurisdiction on this on the child support. So you can always go back to court. The court always has the ability to make an official order for child support. So if you're handling it amicably for a while, then you guys had a falling out. I know that sounds funny. You had a falling out after you've gotten divorced. But you know, how, you know, what I'm talking about parenting or something changes or someone gets involved in your life. You don't like the you know kids are with the new boyfriend or girlfriend. I get it. Things change, especially for these folks who had a two year old. They got 16 years of of uh, raising uh, minor children. Not that when they turn 18, they don't need our help. I can t I can attest to that personally. But, you know, things change. So what would happen in that case? Go to court, um, have a hearing on child support, timeshare, turn in your income statements, and uh, the court will order child support. So there is a way to get that corrected. <clears throat>